What's going on everybody? Eric with Morris 4x4 Center coming back at you with another quick educational video. You know a lot of you people have asked us basically how does a winch operate and what are some of the more principal operating procedures when you have to get out and use your winch. So stick around cowboys and cowgirls and we'll go over the ropes for you. All right, so there's basically two types of winches that you're going to find when it comes to Jeep and truck applications. What you see here before us is an electrically operated winch. Now the other type of winch is a hydraulically controlled winch. Now those, you have to tie some lines into your power steering system and it uses that hydraulic pressure to operate the winch. Now there is a drawback with a hydraulically operated winch in that you have to have the engine running in order to use the winch. So if you sink your Jeep into a mud hole or water where it submerges the entire engine and you can't start it, you're kind of SOL at that point. With an electric winch, as long as you have at least battery power, you can operate this no matter what. Now, all winches pretty much share the same components. Now, starting with the center drum here, that's either gonna be spooled with synthetic rope or steel cable. And then on one side of the winch, you'll have your motor, either electronic or hydraulically operated. And then on this side of the winch, you've got your gear casing, and this lever right here is your clutch actuation. Now, it may look different depending on the manufacturer. This one is a pull up and twist. The others may just be a lever that you turn. That's gonna allow you to engage the gears or put it into free spool mode so you can pull out winch rope by hand. And then, on this electrically operated winch, this right here is the solenoid box. This is what directly connects the winch to your battery power. And then there's also a series of wires that are wired to the electronic motor in this winch. So you can plug your remote in and operate the winch. All right, so we have our Jeep here and we are in our pseudo recovery situation. I'm gonna go over the basic principles that you wanna follow when you're either recovering your own vehicle or somebody else. First things first, make sure you are wearing proper eye protection. And second, you are gonna need hand protection as well. So I've got my ARB recovery bag right here. It's got everything we need, including a sweet pair of gloves. Now that we've got our safety equipment on our body, we're gonna come over here and start to pull some winch line. So basically when you pull winch line, you're going to want to put the transmission of the winch into free spool mode and that's gonna allow you to start pulling line off of the spool. All right, so we've got a sufficient amount of winch line pulled off of this winch. Now in our situation, we're recovering to a tree, so you wanna use a tree trunk protector. Luckily, ARB's got us covered in this bag. Got a nice bright green tree trunk protector. So let's go over to the tree and hook everything up. All right, so we've got our tree trunk protector hooked up and we see that our safety clasp is in the fully closed position so we know we're not gonna have any accidents. Now we're gonna head back down to the vehicle and begin the recovery process. All right, so we're about to recover, but before we begin, you know, we wanna make sure nothing's on the Jeep, no one's hanging around it, so we're gonna take this bag off in case it falls over on somebody's foot. That would be very bad. And uh, so next you wanna make sure that your winch is in gear and ready for the electronic motor to drive the drum and pull the winch line. So we're in gear. Once you're in gear, you can come over and plug in your remote. Let's remove the dust cap. And there's usually a little detent in the end of your plug. So you just have to line that up All right, we're plugged in. Now I'm not gonna recover yet. Basically what I wanna do is just apply pretension to the winch line and then we'll go from there. All right, so we've got an ample amount of pre-tension. Now it's not enough tension to start pulling the Jeep just to raise the rope off the ground because we have to put a winch line damper on here. You always wanna use a winch line damper. That nifty ARB recovery bag comes with one and safety is paramount when it comes to winching. You wanna protect yourself and protect the others around you as well. So let's go put this on. All 
So the point of using a winch line damper is this will dampen any kinetic energy that's stored in the winch line if we were happen to unfortunately have a break or tear in the rope or the cable. Now this is synthetic rope, pretty much as safe as you can get, but you don't want to take any chances. Definitely with steel cable, do not skip out using a winch line damper. Steel cable is heavy, it stores a lot of kinetic energy if it breaks. Unfortunate things have happened in the past. People have lost limbs and their lives, so please be very safe when you're recovering. All right, so we're all safetyed up. We've got everything hooked up correctly and we're ready to start winching. Now, here's probably one of the most important pieces of information that I give you. Now, I can't be there with you in every recovery situation, but you wanna make sure that you stand or sit in the appropriate location to be as safe as possible. Now, most manufacturers that give you a cabled remote give you 12 feet, so stand back as far as possible if you have to stand outside the vehicle. Now, in some extreme situations, we don't recommend sitting inside the vehicle either. If something were to happen and the vehicle rolls downhill, that's a, not, that's a pretty bad place you can be as well. So I leave it up to you, be as safe as possible. So let's start winching. Okay, so we've got everything hooked up. We are safe. We've got all our safety gear, the winch damper. Now we're ready to start winching. Now, you gotta keep in mind where you're going to stand or sit when you're winching your vehicle. Now, most manufacturers that give you a wired remote give you 12 feet, so stand back as far as possible. And if you're winching uphill, you wanna be obviously in front of the vehicle. If something were to happen, the winch fails or the line breaks and the vehicle comes crashing downhill, you wanna be uphill so it doesn't land on top of you. Now, if you've got a wireless remote, that's even better. You can stand wherever you want and be as far away from the vehicle as possible. Just make sure you bring a spare pair of batteries, some fresh ones. You don't want to be stuck out on the trail with dead batteries. All right, so I know I just said sometimes it's not the best idea to be inside the vehicle. Guys, this isn't an extreme situation. I'm going to be sitting inside the vehicle for this one and my cameraman's going to be out in the danger zone. Okay, so I think I scared my cameraman. He moved way back. He's way out of the danger zone. So in this situation, I'm gonna start the vehicle just so we don't run out of juice as we're winching, just in case as a precaution. If you can do that too, when you're recovering, definitely do it. So we're gonna start the vehicle. Now it appears we have reached our damper. So I'm gonna get out. I got the e-brake on. I'll put the vehicle in park. All right, so we don't have a whole lot of winch line left, so I'm gonna, res I'm gonna slide the recovery damper pretty much all the way up. There's not real huge risk of this whipping out and damaging anyone or anything. All right, everybody, that is basically how a winch works and the basic operating procedures you want to follow when you go to recover your vehicle or someone else's. Now, when you go to suck in this little last bit of cable, definitely keep your fingers clear of the drum. You don't want to get those caught in there. That will ruin your day. And also, again, keep in mind of your surroundings. You want to plan out your recovery, no matter how simple or complicated it may be, just to avoid any accidents. Be as safe as possible. That is the only thing that I ask of you if you take anything from this video. So guys, we had so much fun making this one. We hope you enjoyed it. Definitely hit that subscribe button. We're actually gonna be going over a more advanced winch operating tutorial for you guys and show you some different techniques and the different gear that you might end up using if you have to recover. Also, follow us on social media, Instagram and Facebook. We post tons of content every day you don't wanna miss out on. Thank you for watching this video again. I'm Eric with Morris 4x4 Center, and I hope to see you out on the trail.